YouTube. What's up? What's going on? Welcome back. Welcome back. You guys are awesome. It's been a long, it's been a long week again. I, you know, these weeks. <laughs> You, you're not joking. It's it's it's, and I'm not looking at at the next coming weeks being any better personally. Uh, but I remember we were talking about like just the, like our recording schedule and yeah. everything, and how it kind of sucks because we get to the end of the episode and we're like, I want to want to watch the next episode. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's like, but nope, nope, we gotta wait. We gotta talk about right. it. We gotta talk to everybody online, and then we can go watch. Right, the other one. right. It's gonna take forever. Right. What do you think the people would do if we just like blast it? Like we did the whole series over the next, what is it? There's 110 episodes over the next 90 days. Right. You and I just recorded the like- whole thing in, in the next 90 days, one episode a day. But then we spread it out over the next like three years oh, or however long that I was thinking. Through. I was thinking of like Stranger Things in the whole thing and oh. we do it all and we drop oh. the whole oh. thing. Yeah. Hey, YouTube, let us know what you guys think. I'm yeah. just curious. I don't know if people would like that. Like, do you prefer the week to week or do you prefer, yeah, you know, like the week to week and let it rest and let it sit? Or do you, pref- would you want to just like, you go, 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 go all the way through? Yeah. I have very strong feelings about that whole approach, by the way. Yeah. Like, and, and, and honestly, I'm good either way, uh-huh. but there's specific criteria that I have to meet. Yeah. If, if I, perfect example. I love Star Wars. Yep. It's awesome. Love everything about it. Obi-Wan mm-hmm. and Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. I wait for the whole season yeah. to go because I cannot not keep watching. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've done that with star Trek lately mm-hmm. where I believe some shows are better binged. Other shows are better sitting in it for a while, Yeah, you know, and, and marinating like Picard. I really liked Picard even season one. But I noted it was much better when you could just binge it and go all the way through oh, yeah. than having to stop versus uh, something where I think like uh, like Prodigy or even Strange New Worlds, like those are the ones like here's an episode and then stop and and marinate yeah. in it for a while. So um, Lost, I noticed Lost was like that. Lost is much better and it makes much more sense when you street, when you binge it. Just do it. Right. Yeah. Although the water cooler talk of every week of what was going on on Lost was amazing. Like that's what made the show. So it's hard well, to that's say what I think, one way or the other. I think that changed that changed TV was the water cooler talk. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's why it kept going. That's right. why Battlestar Galactica mm-hmm. lost that little, like that moment in TV mm-hmm. time when if you hadn't watched it and you were at work, mm-hmm. oh, God help you. Battlestar Galactica yeah. is another one that is better weekly getting to yes. marinate in it. You got to, you got to sit yeah. in it. Yeah. I watched it the first time, like Portlandia, mm-hmm. right? Where they're just like, Oh, we're going to watch an episode. And 72 hours later, Oh my God, we watched the whole thing. Mm-hmm. That's how I watched it the first time. And it was amazing. I loved it. But when I went back and like watched it over time, mm-hmm. you get a lot more yeah. out of it. Cause those, those are some dense, dense episodes. Yeah. I think in general, the, uh, like my general thought is, is if the whole season is a story, if it's a serialized season, then binge it. If it's a little more episodic in nature, then go week to week. I like I, as a general rule of thumb, I wonder we're far enough now into Babylon five or mm-hmm. what is this? 11 episodes, 10 episodes in something like that. I'm wondering people don't tell us, but I'm just wondering, would this show be better binged? and pushed all the way through, or is it better doing it the way we're doing it where it's like one a week? Yeah. So. I'm curious what people think this episode we're about to dive into <clears throat> makes me think it's better to go week to week mm-hmm. just because of the rhythm, right? The rhythm of things. And I think right. maybe, I don't know what they are. People have talked a lot about this. I've actively avoided anything on this, mm-hmm. but apparently the broadcast order and then the order that it's in on HBO max is not the order that JMS envision mm-hmm. so there's some stuff that's a little out of whack yeah. and we, i think we got that we got a couple episodes that like in a row where it's like oh there's so much going on and then we got other ones where it's like now we're going to slow down you know and we're going to dive deep into it jeff our good friend john krikorian mm-hmm. sent us a, a document just saying this is actually probably the correct watching order have we double checked that lady lately to make sure we're in the right the right deal I haven't because I don't, I mean, for me and kind of what I've said to people online who've commented about it is our, our, the heart, our whole jam is we're, 
we're going in blind. Right. And I think, and I think if we went in and corrected the viewing order, it's going to correct for the mistakes that are part of a first time view. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what? The people out here at YouTube are not here to listen to us talk about all that. They're right. here to listen to us talk about the episode Believers, which Jeff and I have just watched for the very first time. We are going to dive into all the things having to do with this episode. This is our behind the scenes recording, folks. This is unedited. You guys get the entire shebang. All you of get it. all the bloopers, the outtakes, the really stupid theories that don't make the cut for the final for the final podcast, and uh, you get to look at us. So yeah, you get deal. double winnings there, um, Jeff. I'm ready whenever you are. If you're good to go, all right, let's do it. This is my first time. First time. Welcome to Babylon 5 for the first time. Not a Star Trek podcast. My name is Jeff Aiken, and I'm watching Babylon 5 for the first time. And I'm Brent Allen, and I'm also watching Babylon 5 for the first time. We're two veteran Star Trek podcasters watching Babylon 5 for, you got it, the first time. We search for Star Trek like messages, meanings in the series, and we ultimately decide if we should have watched this sooner. Absolutely. And Jeff, while this is not a podcast about Star Trek, it's going to happen. That's who we are. We're not apologizing for it, but we are going to have some fun with it. We have a game. We have a rule of three. We only get three Trek references each. I think we obliterated that last week. Jeff pretty quick, um, but we are going to have that as a game. You only get three Trek references and every time you use one, you're going to hear <laughs> and that means you used one. Uh, so Jeff choose your spots carefully and, and I'm just, I'm going to mark it starting right now until we get to the end where we actually do the Trek comparison. It starts right now. All right. I'm not going to lie. There's a lot in this one that I could, I could go too easy. One thing I love is that we have our references that we're going to make, but you have references that you make as well. The interactions with you are what keep Brent and I coming back. We, well, honestly, your interactions and what's becoming a show. I really, <laughs> I really, I really like mm -hmm. week after week. I'm wanting to come back to this, but we've got a couple things we want to share with you that you've shared with us. There, you know, Jeff, the thing is they're making references in those comments that you and I don't understand yet. <laughs> Flying right over our heads. <laughs> like completely, they could have given everything away and I'd just be like, yeah, yeah, totally. Sure. Garibaldi's pretty weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. What, whatever. I don't know. Right. Well, Brent five star review on Apple podcast. Woot. woot. Yeah, this one's from Shock Scream at Shock Scream on Twitter as well. And Shock Scream says in their five star review on Apple Podcasts, which you can take a second and pop over there and do as well, it says Jeff and Brent bring their love of Star Trek to the world of Babylon 5 as they enjoy the beloved show for the very first time. It's a great listen as they try to tease the Star Trek out of the show and try to pick up on plot threads that will carry through. Highly recommend. You know, Jeff, I think we need to change our opening spiel to just pull what shock scream just said. <laughs> We're right. going to tease the Star Trek out of it and try to pick up on threats. I really like the wording of that. That's that's really good. Thank you, shock stream. That is fan freaking tastic. I appreciate that. Super good. Another one from Twitter. We're at Babylon first, by the way, on Twitter. It'd be great for you to follow us. Also, when you're on there, no spoilers, please. Slightly fixated on Twitter says, my wife and I have been fans of B5 for 20 plus years and love how even your dislikes with the show are framed in a positive way. We also love giggling over what you've predicted, rightly or wrongly. That That's why we do the predictions. <laughs> it's purely for your enjoyment, folks, because you know what? Jeff and I don't have a clue. 
No. In, in fact, we make predictions at the end of every episode based on the title of the next episode, guessing what it's going to be. Today, we're going to talk about believers. Brent, do you remember what you thought believers was going to be about Jeff. it's been a full week man since I know. I, and i've seen this episode a couple of times now what did i i think i said i need to write this down i think i said something to the effect of this had to do with the religion think, and, and i think you said again soul hunter 2 is what you were oh that's about. right that's yeah that's what i said yeah. i said this is soul hunter 2 no not at all uh but it is it is definitely very steeped in in religion it is. Mm -hmm. So I think this is the probably the closest both of us have come. You brought up religion. I thought it was going to be cultists mm -hmm. coming on board. Ooh, yeah. We're both off, yeah. but definitely, definitely um, faith and religion based yeah. stuff. Now I'll tell I'll tell you where we came the closest though was when we predicted mind war because we both went psychor and that's when we right. got check off and yes, absolutely. Well, and frankly, if that was anything else, like then it's just they're just rolling like episode title dice at that point. <laughs> right. it's like, uh, mind and war, yeah. Well, we'll we'll go with that. <laughs> well, in today's episode, this is uh, episode ten of the first season of Babylon Five. We're watching Believers. For those of you that it might have been, you know, thirty some odd years since you've seen it, or those who are watching along with us, Brent, why don't you remind everyone what this episode is about? Well, first of all, Jeff. This episode was written by David Gerald. The one and the only. That's the guy who wrote the absolutely hilarious episode, The Trouble with Tribbles. And this is sure to be a feel-good, fun episode, right? Absolutely. I mean, right? not only that, he came back with the animated series, Tribbles episode. This guy's nothing but giggles and fun. Right? Yeah. Well, let's get into it. <laughs> yeah. It's just your ordinary average day on Babylon 5. Everyone's going about their regular business. And down in the med lab, doctors Franklin and Hernandez are with a family who's got a sick kid, but no worries. Whatever it is that's ailing him, it's really common and it's really easy to treat. It's just going to take a very simple, very minor surgery. He's going to bounce back super quick. He's going to grow up to be healthy and strong, and probably he's going to have a really cool scar to boot. But his parents aren't so keen on the idea of surgery. In fact, they absolutely forbid it. You see, according to their religion, cutting him open will cause the boy to lose his spirit from the great egg. And it's better to just have him prepare himself for his fate than to lose his spirit. Meanwhile, let's check in on our B plot. Some space pirates are out there troubling the Asimov, a starliner, and Ivanova is itching to get out of the house for a while. So she pulls a Sinclair and heads out in a Star Fury to go get the Asimov and escort her home. When she gets there, she finds the Asimov is and when she gets there, she finds the Asimov and only one single space pirate in the area. Against all common sense and orders, Ivanova orders her wingmen to escort the Asimov out of the territory while she goes after the Black Pearl. Arg! Eventually, she catches up and takes him out. But in doing so, she runs headfirst into a whole armada of space pirates. Well, short, short story later, she gets away, but not without taking some damage. And the Asimov makes it safely back to Babylon 5 to let its people off. Okay, all of that's out of the way. Let's get back to the A plot. Dr. Franklin is trying to get in the good graces of the parents. He says, hey, listen, there's a really non-invasive treatment that we can do. The parents agree. But Dr. Hernandez slaps Franklin upside the head and thinks he's just put and thinks he's just pushing a bunch of lies on top of the parents. Franklin says, listen, chill out. It's going to give me time to get the parents on my side so they'll let me do the surgery. Like, duh, Hernandez. But that doesn't stop the two from betting on a steak dinner, which is apparently a very rare thing on Babylon 5. And Dr. Franklin says he's going to find a way to save this boy. Now, remember that non-invasive stuff that he was promising would give them more time? Yeah, it didn't work. And the kid, Sean, is getting worse. Franklin pleads with the parents to reconsider the surgery, but they stand their ground. To do so would be a fate worse than death. So Franklin decides to get Sinclair involved to override them because I guess he can do that. And it kind of backfires, though. Since they have no ambassador on the station, that means Sinclair has to be their representative and take up their cause. And he's clearly torn about the decision, but he eventually goes to the boy himself and asks him what he wants. Sean says he doesn't want to die, but he'd rather die than lose a soul. So let him go, which is just poppycock all according to, to Franklin. Now the parents, 
Sinclair and the boy have all said no to this operation, but Franklin does it anyway. And you're never going to guess what the surgery works. And Sean himself is well on the way to being healed. He's bright eyed, bushy tailed. And guess what? He doesn't feel any different. His soul hasn't left his body. He feels exactly the same. But his parents freak out, completely abandon him, leaving him crying on the floor while they call him a cursed demon child spawn of Satan, which let's face it. What parent hasn't ever said that about their children? Just me. Uh, okay. Well, anyway, once the parents calm down, they come get him. They come get their walking zombie shell of what used to be their son. And they take him to full on kill him and put him where he belongs. Franklin breaks down in tears. Sinclair comes to put the smack down on Franklin. But JMS didn't want to recast the role of the doctor again, so they're going to let him stay for next episode. But he is going to get a very serious, serious finger wagging as we head out to the credits. Yeah, thanks, David Gerald, right. for that. That was so fun. Was, man, that was, the, those two compared, don't they? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, David Gerald we get for free, but I'm going to cost. I'm going to I'm going to spend one of mine right away. Mm. The mom in this was played by Trisha O'Neill, Trisha O'Neill, Captain Rachel Garrett from yesterday's enterprise. Really? Yeah. Wow. She's an enterprise captain. That is a deep pull, but yeah. wow. Okay. So I was, I was watching her and the husband and I'm like, there's there. She was amazing. Like I just got to say she was yeah. amazing. And I'm like, there's no way she's nobody. And so I, I went and looked and I'm like, Oh, Oh my God, it's Captain Garrett. Wow. It's pretty cool. Wow. But this, this episode hit me hard, um, yeah. really hard. It was filthy. It was ugly. I mean, it was gross and sick, but in all the right ways, you know, mm -hmm. like I think that if I had watched this when it first aired and I was like, I don't know. I think it was 17, maybe 19, I don't know, somewhere math gets fuzzy when mm -hmm. you're a teenager. I, I probably wouldn't have cared for this very much. I would have been like, oh, it's just some, you know, it's the Christian mm -hmm. faith thing versus the court where they don't do medicine, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Right. As a parent, as a parent and someone who has lost people really close to me. And frankly, and, and some people may not, some people may think this is ridiculous, but like, I had to put one of my dogs down that I loved with all of my heart. Mm -hmm. And in the scene where they're like cradling Sean and they're accepting, like, we're going to leave you mm -hmm. to die. And Captain Garrett is just, I mean, just the way that she's crying, but keeping her cool. Right. That was, that was me when I had to sign the piece of purple paper mm -hmm. that let them, let them put my dog down. And, I, yeah, that was this, 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 this really hit hard for me. I have to say since becoming a parent myself 10 years ago, I watch movies. I watch television. I understand everything different. Like it's, I think that's right. I think it's natural. I think that's just how it works. Mm -hmm. Watching this episode, not having kids. I just don't imagine could hit anywhere near the same as it does having kids, yeah. you know? And, there, and I think there's there can be people all along the spectrum of those two things, depending on whatever their personal situation is. Um, I found this episode poignant, a, a cannon shot to the heart. Mm hmm. Yeah. Relevant to today. Incredibly well acted. I mean, you talk about the mom, but I also think about the, the dad, like when they got to that scene where they completely rejected their shell of a son. Yeah. I mean, the, the, it was visceral. Yeah. Visceral. Overall, this is not an episode I want to come back and watch very often. But as of right now, this is an episode that I'm going to have a lot of respect for. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? But I'm yeah. not going to come watch. This is not a feel good episode. This is not trouble with tribbles at all. This is, this is, uh, it, 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 it's just, it's a hard hitting episode. 
Um, and it's and it's so real, right? It's yeah. it's not it's not clean cut or clear. Mm-hmm. It's not Doctor Franklin is right because he's the scientist, and they're wrong because they have some weird what we would what would they call it? false religion? And in, mm-hmm. in you know Sinclair's point, what what makes a false religion? Yeah. This was presented in a way, and I think it was Delenn who called this out when when they were the parents were going around to all the ambassadors trying mm-hmm. to stop Sinclair from uh, approving Franklin's request. But Delenn was like, they said, we're just trying to help our son. And she's like, yeah, and that's exactly what Dr. Franklin believes he is doing. Who's right. Mm-hmm. We don't know. There's no way to know. Right. And, oh, right. I, I grew up, I grew up in a sect of Catholicism. That was weird. Um, long story for mm-hmm. another day, another time, but it was, it was rooted in a lot of just not great, great stuff. Border borderline cult, I would say. Sure. And, and, and I really understood where the parents were coming from. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, we believed so in, in, and I, it, we believed that a woman's role was solely to have children. And that if you died having children, you were a martyr and you had assured your spot in heaven. So I have family that have 13, 14, 15 kids Mm -hmm. because they just never stopped. And they believed that was their, their duty. Right. And so when they're like, yeah, he, for him to die, it's a great honor because he'll die with his spirit. Mm -hmm. I think if you haven't been in that kind of weird religious paradigm before Mm -hmm. you just think you just think those people are like you're nuts like what do you but when you've been there i'm like i get you i know what you're thinking Mm -hmm. and oh it's just so complex and so complicated it's i don't know i i appreciated that that it wasn't so clear cut there wasn't a right answer in this yeah so i mean you talking about that just makes this comment all the more correct to me i got major major two vix vibes from this episode mm. Mm. and mostly out of that that realm of there is no right answer or both answers are right yeah. or something or like both that. answers are wrong or both answers and, but, are wrong but, yeah now they're the only answer now honestly in two vix i actually i found that one actually a lot more easier because i think janeway murdered a person Mm-hmm. just that's that's how that happened if you guys haven't seen the episode two go watch it another episode that is fantastic it is not feel good and you are not going to want to watch it that often no but you no. want to start a debate in the star trek fandom just bring it up and you're going to start that debate i wonder Ooh, jeff is this a debate in the babylon I, 5 fandom of who was right i don't know and i so my first thought was that's our tweet that's our tweet to send up but then it's going to pull in because again right the things aren't wasted either either the religion is going to pay off mm-hmm. in a future piece this race something something right and if we pose that question we're going to get exposed to stuff but i in the comments right it, yes let us know or on no Twitter at Guys, let, let's yeah. make that easy yes or no that's all we want to know is this a debate in the babylon 5 fandom of who was right franklin or the parents yeah that's that'd be fascinating to me now I'm not a doctor, mm. uh, Brent, you have a, you're a lot closer to that, uh, industry mm. and, and that, that, that whole thing than I am. So I, I have a question about Franklin okay. in this, cause he, he took a journey right mm-hmm. on here where he kind of started, he has historically been the whole, like, oh, soul hunter. Yeah. soul. that's a lot of nonsense. Right. And then when they're like, Hey, don't tell us what's in the great stream. He's like, like his facial features were great. His expression. He's like, whatever. Hey kid, you're going to be fine. Like, this is good. Right. So he's got a history of kind of downplaying faith and religion, but he was also kind of being reasonable doctor in a way of like, Hey, I got to give him something. I got to do this. You can't question, question their, their religion Mm -hmm. all the way down to where he's like, I will put my career on the line. I'll hand in my resignation. All these things will happen. It, it's pretty common in television to have that, that doctor be like, I don't care what the rules are. I don't care this. There's a, there's a kid on my bed and I'm going to save their life Mm -hmm. in your experience. Mm -hmm. Is that a, is that a doctor thing or is that a TV thing? That's a TV thing. Yeah. That's that's a TV thing. Um, for the most part, I'm not going to say that there's not doctors out there that wouldn't behave like that. I'm sure there are, but for the most part, like doctors have a pretty clear cut protocol. And one of those protocols 
is you go with the wishes of the family. Now, if that kid was a, had a prescient, uh, verbal, very clear, I don't want to die. Doctor, please help me. Doctor, please save me. And the parents were saying, da, 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 da. then you'd have somebody who did whatever they, they, they had a chance to. Sinclair did the best thing I've ever seen Sinclair do in this whole series since we started watching. He went to the kid and said, yes. what do you want? And the kid said, I don't want to die, but it's better than losing my soul. Just let me go. He had made peace with it. Let it go. Yeah. You know, I loved, I loved Sinclair in this episode. He was handed, he was handed the, the Tuvix question, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, there's not a right answer for him and I'm not buzzing myself. I'm just back I'm yep, piggybacking yep. on Brent's, <laughs> but I'll give it to you, but, but he did what you should do in a situation like that. Yeah. He had a great conversation with Garibaldi. He reached out to the Senator and ask questions that I liked. I really liked that conversation with Garibaldi there where he's like, you reached out to the Senator and he's like, yo, for advice, I'm not going to reach out to them every time I have to make a decision. I, you have to talk through these things, mm -hmm. but he did. He went around, he talked to people, he got input, he informed himself. And then, like you said, he went to mm -hmm. the, to the kid. He went to the person yeah. that was impacted. Yeah. I thought, I thought he was great. This was, this was. Sinclair's shining leadership moment to me. And then he made the right and difficult call. Yeah. I got, I, and I'll say that it was the right mm -hmm. as a leader, right? That impacts everything else that totally debatable, but as a leader in his role, he made the right call. Yeah. This episode didn't do what you typically find in sci-fi with an episode like this. It's kind of what we saw in soul hunter, honestly, where they go through this whole thing about does he have a soul or doesn't he? Is he going to lose his soul? If you cut him open, is something, is a spirit going to leave him? Right. And, but like they're questioning you, you have, you always have the person who's of faith and then you have the person who's of science and no, you're just a body and you're just an organism. So let's just keep you alive. And then when you're dead, you're gone. And then this person's like, no, no, you're actually so much more than that. And when you get to the end of it, it usually in science fiction, usually, kind of comes out on the side of the the science of like you're just a shell but there's something that usually happens that makes you go oh maybe it is this maybe maybe it could be really this soul i don't know maybe something happened right we we've seen that in tons of of sci-fi shows um, mm -hmm. not just not just one over the other like we've seen it out there this episode didn't do that this episode in no way shape or form gave and lent any kind of credence to the great egg, the stream, the feathers, the shell. It just, it, it was just a, do you believe this or don't you? Yeah. Right. Uh, which honestly is a bit more real world of where we live. Right. I mean, cause that's all kind of a whole piece of faith. Like you can't really prove faith one way or the other. Like you either believe it or you don't, or yeah, that's faith. Yeah. That's what faith is. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so to go back to what Franklin was saying, kind of where you were saying of how he, like he kind of ran the gamut and through this episode, he starts at the beginning and I, like, I loved what he said. He said, you can never insult a patient's beliefs. You work with them. You try to understand them. And you give them a reason to be on your side. And I was like, yeah, that's yeah. like, I'm going to save that for the, for the Star Trek message at the end of the show. Cause that's what it is. And then you get through it and you realize, stop. Yeah. All he is doing is manipulating them in that moment. He's not trying to get on their side. The problem is he's not trying to understand them. He wants them to understand him. He wants them to come shift to him. He does not want to take that journey going the other direction. And that's a problem. And I think a big part of what made the end of this and Brent, I cannot overstate how shocking the end of this was yeah. you, you knew like, so in the scene, they, there, there's a scene I'm going to talk about in more depth on my closing thoughts, but where they forgive Franklin mm -hmm. and they have this 
robe. This is the robe of long journeys. And we're going to, we're going to head off and do something. And he's like, Oh, okay. You know, at that point you're like, Oh no. Oh, they're going to go get him. And yeah. Like, you, you know, immediately that that's what yeah. they're getting ready to go do. You thought they would and stop then, them and intervene and somebody would stop uh -huh. them before it happened. And you were wrong, but that's what you thought was going to happen. But you knew what was getting ready to come. Yeah. You're just like, this is not good. And then it starts right. unfolding and it immediately unfolds in a way where you're like, this is not good. But he had asked his, uh, the other doctor to do some research on the culture. What a novel, awesome idea to do. Hey, uh, let me learn about your culture a little bit. He literally does the surgery. He's doing, you know, hey, great. They gets decried as a demon. Mm -hmm. And then like five minutes later, she's like, hey, finished my research. He's like, oh, cool. Let me, oh, crap. And then if he had waited two hours before cutting into this kid, he could have had all, he could have seen everything there. He could have mm -hmm. reached that understanding, right. but you're right. He didn't care. He wanted her to do that research to check a box. Mm -hmm. Essentially, he was going to get his way one way or another, but oh man, he was right. He they in. were wrong period. period and no compromise. And he's really pushing that on to these people over here who are clearly saying no. Jeff, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Does it change the equation if the child is an infant or a toddler, not a 10, 11, 12 year old who can clearly state their own wills, will and desires in that moment? You know, I, I, I don't, the process changes. I don't think the outcome does at that point. Mm -hmm. So Sinclair makes a comment to the parents when they are pleading with him mm -hmm. to, to protect. And he says, I, I really wish you had an ambassador. Yeah. on board. This would make things a lot easier on me. I think if this were a toddler or an infant, someone who could not, or, or anyone, even a fully grown person who could not speak yeah. on their own behalf, speak right. for themselves. At that point, the parents are the ambassador. They are the final word yeah. on this. And that makes it harder, totally harder. It changes the process. Sinclair can't go to the source mm -hmm. and ask. He's got to make the call got to make the call on his own, but you know, he, the, the, the principle that he was kind of having overriding, making his decision to make his decision, I think would have led him to the same place. Franklin was arguing that the precedent was set that because he had ordered the prior doctor to order, to operate on Kosh to save Kosh's life. Mm -hmm. He was arguing that precedent said it was okay for him to operate on this kid, despite the culture or the wishes of the parents. Sinclair in a shining leadership moment owned that that was that 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 was a mistake to have made that call. I made. I mean, not that it was a mistake, but that it should setting a precedent would have been a mistake. Mm -hmm. He made the line that was the camel's nose in the tent. We have to stop it before it walks all the way in. Yeah, and so I think with that, I think he would have ended up in the same place. But I think then he would have been carrying a much bigger weight. the The weight of decision would have weighed on him a lot more than it did if he couldn't have spoken with Sean, but see, that's, I mean, and this is, this is the debate. Okay. So let's bring this into the real world. There's some cult out there in the middle of, I don't know, Oklahoma. Sorry, Oklahoma. I'm not trying to pick on you. It's literally the, one you're okay. Yeah. You're okay. I was it's fine. I was trying not to say other States that didn't have you, uh, uh, cults in them anyway. Right. Um, so there's just some cult out there and these, these people don't believe in medicine. They don't believe in, um, uh, doctors, they don't believe in X, Y, Z. I, I don't even know if it has to be a cult. Honestly, it's not. We, we had a court case here in uh -huh. Portland, Oregon, just maybe, I don't know, eight, 10 years ago of exactly this, where yeah. they refused any medical in intervention. Yeah. The kid died. Yeah. They were charged with, I think with manslaughter. Yeah. And if I, and I could be wrong, please fact check me or whatever, but I believe they were found not guilty. Really? Because, that, because I, of the protection that religion is given in the constitution. Huh? Interesting. Cause that was going to be my question. So what do you do? You know, I, I mean, even taking that, like there's a, there's also a difference between the criminal side of it, which we try in a court versus the civil side or the moral side, the ethical side. Well, Ed, honestly, that side's a little more up for debate depending on where you come from. Right. So it, it it's tough, man. And like, I, th I think you look at this and, and you could apply this to things like vaccines. Should yep, you give exactly. your kids vaccines? 
Should you, uh, what other kind of intervention should you do if you just, if you call it a religious thing? Mm-hmm. And then how many people are just hiding behind religion to not, to just not do what they want to do? Um, it's tough, man. It's a, this yeah. is a tough watch. And when they go and actually kill him, but in their, and to them, in their culture, in their mind, he was already They're, gone. Exactly. This was a they, shell. They, yeah. He was gone. I think and I they think were doing, they were doing a service. They were doing a service to him, to his memory and to society and their culture. They were right. heroes. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think of the Klingons, right? When a Klingon warrior dies, the, the, the other Klingons gather around him. They do the to the sky and then they get up and they walk away and they say, do whatever you want with the body. It's just a shell. Exactly. So and so is no longer here. Just, like there is no burial. There is no cremation. There is no service. There is because the body is nothing now. <clears throat> Thank you. That is what they considered their son to be as a zombie, basically. Yeah. If you saw a zombie walking around, let's play that game, Jeff. If you had a zombie walking around, even if it wasn't trying to eat you. Are you going to just wallop it upside its head and, and take it out? hundred percent. But here's the thing. I live, I, I live in Near Portland, zombies? Oregon. Oh. Well, I live in Portland, Oregon, where right. I guarantee you, if it doesn't exist already, there's one getting formed. There's a zombie rights activist group already preparing for the apocalypse. Who would advocate for, you know, there used to be people too. And I live so. in the South and I guarantee, well, there, there's not even a guarantee you. I know for a fact, there are people who are preparing for the zombie cop apocalypse and like they're ready to go. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Nails through baseball out. bats and everything. Yeah. <laughs> right. But no, it, it is. And it's hard and I, and, and it's not easy. And that's what I, one of the things I, uh, I was going to say, I love about this episode, but I don't, I hate it, uh-huh. but I appreciate so much about it is they just left it there. And that scene was so oh shocking. And the actor who portrays Franklin did, I mean, when he just walked, he's just like, Oh my God. Like you could, you could feel, you could feel that. Yeah. And he, th- and this is my, my hope, my plea for the serialization of what Babylon five is. This has to have been a pivotal moment that will forever, forever change. Dr. Franklin, you don't yeah. go through this and come out the same person. Right. I am, uh, I'm going to make a prediction. I have a theory. Here we go. Here's my big theory. You actually kind of stole it from me. You said it earlier. I think this thing with the great egg and the culture, I think this is going to become important moving forward, or we're going to come back to it. something. This is such a well-developed uh, culture for the script and for the story mm-hmm. to make this a one-off thing. We are going to encounter this again. The great you know what egg. I just, what I just piece, piece together here What's is that? so there's the great egg the, uh-huh. uh, the emergence from it. And then the, the spirit within you that if your body is punctured leaves, you know, another thing we saw not too long ago is spirits leaving the body was when the soul hunter actually captured the real for yeah. souls or essences or whatever. Maybe this is our soul hunter tie in of some kind oh. where soul right? hunters, They're, soul hunters are from this planet. Oh, oh are they, wow. the same? are they, or like an offshoot of the planet? Right, because they they they've like, got no, the like the, the Romulans and the Remans, like mm-hmm, they're yep. you know so right. I think that was that's my three right. Oh. Yeah, yeah, okay. but it, but it's exactly that, and I think yeah. So they they were formed in in this culture because they found out we were they were doing surgeries or whatever and losing the spirits and like hey we have this technology this whatever mm-hmm. where we can recapture it and oh. We should, we should spread this out across other species and cultures because we need to preserve. I think, I think we're onto something. Soul hunters are, are from the great egg. I really, I like, I want to go take a, I want to take a picture. And it's of the, the egg. It's the egg in their forehead. That's what the forehead thing is. Is there the symbol of the egg? I want to, I want to go look at the picture of the dad. I want to go look at a picture of the soul hunter and I want to compare the two and I want to see, cause I'm, I, I feel like there's some similarities, but also some differences. But it could be, I don't know. I, it's its a thing. It's a thing. There is this line somewhere in the middle of it. I didn't write down who said it. 
I'm assuming this was Dr. Franklin, but it could have been Sinclair. He said, you got to heal the family before you heal the patient. Oh yeah. You know, uh, such a good line. Uh, it, it kind of goes back to what he was saying at the beginning. You got to get on their side. You got to get them over here first. Um, can we say this about Dr. Franklin though? Or what do you think? Cause I think this is true. He should have been fired and cashiered out of the service immediately. Oh, yeah. yeah. Immediately. No conversation. No, no, nothing. Just a literal, mm -hmm. like you got your knapsack. You're out. Go, go. Yep. I'm putting you on a cargo ship. You're not even getting like a seat. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Which by the way, perhaps makes this the most, um, other show we don't talk about here anymore, or I'm not allowed to anyway. Uh, you can, you can, it probably makes it the most, one of those things ever. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, and I, I thought, I think you hit it on the head when it's like, well, that's a great story where these things are going to happen, but crap, we already recast this, this thing once and, mm -hmm. and came up with a story of why we, are we going to have all the doctors that ever come on Babylon five, like <laughs> spin off and do a thing. And yeah. Can we talk real quick about Ivanova? I was, oh, I was getting ready to do that. I have hopes, hoping you're going that direction. Yeah. I, oh my, so. I stand Ivanova have this whole time. And I think it's the first time I've ever used that phrase that I stand someone I've ever used <laughs> that in my life. Do you know what it means? I do. Yeah. It's the M and M stand thing, right? No, 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 no. M and M stand is a, is the name of a person. Stan stand is when you stand somebody, it's an, it's an amalgamation of the word stalker fan. Oh, you're not I just a fan. Them. You're a stalker fan. You stand I, them. I do not stand Ivanova. That's <laughs> So I retract that, <laughs> but if you're, but, if you're on YouTube and you listen to this on whatever you might, you might not hear this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> little, little different than the stand in m and but not to, I mean, there's definitely some similarities, but not, not yeah. Quite, yeah. Well, I, I yeah. love Ivanova. She's yes. great. I've thought she's great this whole time mm -hmm. for her again. Okay. So putting it in its time and place. We've talked about having a woman in a position of power, having a Russian woman in a position of power. And now what we have is a woman in a position of power actively advocating for herself. This is so powerful today in 2022 as we're recording this, like her pushing back on Sinclair and he was so offhanded about it. Like it, he had zero intent of insulting her, but it was the most insulting thing he could possibly say. And she didn't let him off the hook. I loved that so much. Yeah. I, I love, I mean, and she turned around and did what Sinclair wanted to, she's like, I need to get out of the house. I'm itching yeah. to get out of the house. Like I fully understand that. I get exactly where she's coming from, but she goes full on Sinclair. She should not have gone on this mission. No. That was not her role. That's not what but she's supposed to do. But they talk about, and, they, and then she's the one who's brought this up a couple of times. There's certain activities that happen on the station that require a person of command rank. And mm -hmm. from what I can tell, that's her, Sinclair, and Garibaldi. Right. They needed someone at that level to go because there could have been combat, which is a really, I don't know, a weird, a weird rule. I think anyone who's fighter qualified should be ready to lead a squad on a station of 250,000 people. There's only three command level members. That would be ridiculous. I mean, 250,000, how many, how many are actually part of the, the military guard that's running the station? Well, I don't think a lot. Cause clearly they're not, they're not running any security or policing activities on the Zoko <laughs> or anywhere else. So, I mean, <laughs> sounds about right. Yeah. But, but realistically, you're probably looking at it out of 250,000. You're probably looking at, 500 to a thousand people easily that are probably the thing, and probably yeah. more than that, that are working for the station itself and mm -hmm. people that are running their own businesses and stuff. Like there's gotta be more than just three people in command of command rank. Right. Yeah. That, doesn't that mean that one of those three have to be on at all times as yeah. well? And if they have to be on at all times, one, and then they also have to be out leading every potential combat mission. Oh, and they have to be the ones accepting prisoners that are coming off of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just and they got to be job. the ambassador representative to whatever issues are going on there, and they yeah. have to. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't quite stack up, but again, right. maybe that's why Sinclair uh, sleeps for four minutes a day. Right. You know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I loved, I liked this uh, B plot. I will tell you what I was supremely impressed by. I know this doesn't happen very often on Deep Space Nine. 
but this is a great example of where the a plot and b plot lined up super nicely yeah they super comp did you catch it because they're both about an officer disobeying orders to do what they think is right to save people yeah that's what they're both yeah. about right we commend ivanova we question franklin so who's right who's wrong right yeah i forget um, her line at the end when she talked about that where she's like it was uh wasn't it was an educated or a, a guess or an educated risk an educated risk and then garibaldi's like yeah well, i should catch you up on a few things around here <laughs> right <laughs> right uh wow but that's the thing isn't it right like mm -hmm. what if franklin had done the operation yeah and they came and saw sean and they're mm -hmm. like oh my gosh you were right we're so sorry we were a pain in the butt now franklin's a visionary and he's a hero well he's going to be the guy who upends an entire culture because they're going to go back to their culture and be like he's still here he's still alive his soul hasn't escaped yeah. like it, he's, it's going to like cause a, a revolution on their on their deal like uh, that's how sci-fi normally goes it, it is like, it's what i it's it's what i liked and it's what i hate about this episode all at the same time is because it went away that this episode gets set up you see it but it went in a different way and honestly it went in probably a more true to life way yeah frankly yeah. frankly all right jeff let me ask you let's boil it down we've hit that spot it's that time i want you to rate this episode on a scale of zero to five deltas how much does this give us hope for the future or hold up a mirror to society or teach a moral lesson or pose a moral question zero to five deltas and should we watch this one sooner so in my opinion we should have watched Believe it. Believe it. a little bit sooner i think that this uh this is one that i Frankly, like you said, I'm going to, I don't necessarily want to watch this one again, but not because mm -hmm. it was not good, but because it feels disgusting to watch yeah. it for, for all the right reasons. But it sets things up in a way that earlier, wow, this would have added some really cool depth and context to characters. But in the storyline, I don't think it would have necessarily worked that much, but God, this was a great episode. This was such a good episode of Babylon five and a great episode of science fiction. And the whole time I was watching it, and I think that you alluded to this a couple times too. I was like, this is star Trek hundred percent. Like this is a slam dunk five Delta episode. We've got, uh, we've got a, a woman in a position of power advocating for herself and, and going out and, and, and taking care of business. We have faith versus science or faith as science, right? Mm -hmm. When it's like, yeah, their God is this, your God is medicine. What's the difference? We talk about respecting cultures and beliefs, the sanctity of what Babylon five stands for. If, you know, Sinclair just exerts his will. The moment that I initially decided that yes, 100%, this is a five Delta episode was when the parents forgave Franklin. That was huge. And for me, and again, this is aging me, but this brought up uh, Ronald Reagan when the assassin John Hinckley attempted to assassinate him and he went into the, the hospital to forgive him for that when Pope John Paul II was shot and he went to the prison to forgive the per like this was saint level forgiveness <laughs> that yeah. they they put on him. Oh, oh, but then <laughs> but after that, yeah, they they ritually um kill their son and leave uh leave uh, leave Franklin holding on to all that stuff. I think that, you know, Star Trek doesn't always end on a positive note. And I think that's, um, people will often decry Star Trek. Well, it's all sunshine and roses and they, this, no, no, there are some wildly dark. You mentioned two in there, but there's some wildly dark episodes of Star Trek. This, this went a couple, this one quite a bit darker, I think than, than Star Trek did. I think that for me, where I start really chipping away at the five Delta piece, there's a line that Sinclair said to Franklin after it was all kind of said and done. And he said, you never should have made the request. Yeah. And he was just implying, you should have just done this. Like you shouldn't have come to me. You shouldn't have made it a deal. You should have, you should have, should have just done it, which is really what Ivanova did. She just peeled off and took care of the thing. 
And then there's a piece we didn't talk about at all, but the parents went politicking to all the different ambassadors. I mean, even Kosh made an appearance for this, but they were trying to basically set up a way to, if, if uh, Sinclair signed, Frank, signed Franklin's request to, to shut him down, it was masterful how they all selfishly were like, oh, that's, it's really too bad. You have nothing that matters to us. So we're not going to put our necks on the line. I liked Jakar actually when he's just like, I don't even know your world existed till two days ago. <laughs> and oh. now you're going to come to me. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm going to interrupt you just a bit. <laughs> Jakar and Londo both stole this episode for the two 15 seconds that they were yep. on the screen each. But when they were on, they were on and they stole the whole thing. It was there. Those two guys are probably the best part of this whole show. It was, they're amazing. Jakar, he's yeah. in the laundry. just like, well, you know, I'm going to have to do this and we call this guy. And I, I mean, you know, I just don't have the energy to do that for someone who's <laughs> not Centauri. Right. <laughs> right. So I think that this, this definitely similar to last week posed top tier level Star Trek questions yep. where last week failed as it posed them. And then it went in like politic things and a great episode, but it didn't dive into them. This episode did dive into them, but it took a grittier, more, uh, more contemporary view on it. I'm still super high on this one. I'm going to score this four deltas. Yeah. So to just kind of piggyback off what you're saying there about Star Trek uh, specifically, Star Trek actually is at its best. Some of its best episodes are ones where it poses the question, it explores it, and then it stops. It doesn't answer. It doesn't say what's right or wrong. It leaves that to you as the audience to decide. That's not Star Trek. That's sci-fi. Sci-fi does that best. Yeah. And that's where I find uh, episodes like this one. But as far as is this Star Trek, I, you know, at first when he's like, you you first talk to the patients and you get to know them. And you, I'm like, yeah, that's Star Trek. That's that's because that's what we do. We talk, we uh -huh. get to know the other side and, and that's what solves the, the conflict and stuff like that. And then it turns out he was just trying to manipulate them and he went and did it anyway. So that wasn't it. It came down to this line though, between Sinclair and Franklin at the end, I think they were sitting on the stoop or whatever they were, they were on Sinclair says this, what makes us human is that we care. And because we care, we don't stop trying. And then Franklin turns around and says, no, what makes us human is that we have so many ways to hurt. Now, I think Franklin was talking about hurting on the inside because this was after all that happened, not necessarily inflicting pain on others. We have so many ways to inflict pain. I don't think that's what he's talking about. I suppose he could have meant that because that's what he did. But I'm going to choose to believe that he was talking about the former of we're human because we feel so deeply we hurt. I think they're both right. And I think these two statements together are a wonderful statement on the condition of humanity. And that's where we find the Star Trek. It's a commentary on condition of humanity. It's not our fight, but we care and we won't stop trying. And because we care, we're going to feel it in the deep recesses of our soul. In other words, Jeff. I know we're in this part, but I'm going to need one anyway. I need to borrow one of your unused Star Trek references. You didn't did use say, all of yours. Did we say we could do that? Like, that's cool. Yeah, I think we did. If we didn't, I'm going to say yes. <laughs> well, yeah, we both, here you go. Here you go. Right. You can use it. All right. All right. Here's the deal. In other words, we're not effing Vulcans. Right? Yeah. We feel. We have emotions. We care. And that's what makes us hum humans. That's what makes us do what we do. That's what drives us. Franklin only did what he did because he cared. Now it might've been wrong, but he did it for the right reasons. You know, mm -hmm. when they came and they killed that little kid or the shell of the little kid, however you want to look at it, Franklin broke to pieces. Why? Because he was wrong because he was going to get in trouble because no, because he cared. This is what makes us human. This is what makes us. I'm going to say great. I've been watching enterprise lately for beam me up. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I know in that is because in a lot of ways that episode, that show is about 
the founding of the Federation over in Star Trek and how the four different cultures came together. And there's a piece of the, the three other cultures that, that formed were already out there in the universe. It's almost like they were waiting for humanity to come on the scene before it could coalesce because humanity was the one that could bring them together. Humanity, like this, this thing that makes us uniquely human Mm -hmm. that sometimes has us make the wrong choice. Let's face it. We'll, we make the wrong choice, but you do it because you care. That's what draws things together. That's what's so attractive to those out there who just feel, or those who want to war or those who want whatever it brings us together. It is a beautiful statement on what makes us human. You can make a right decision. You can make a wrong decision, but you do it because you care. And in doing so you get to keep your job anyway. Yeah. So yeah. for me, I'm going to very much disagree with you. And I'm going to tell you, you need to rank that sucker back up. Cause this is five deltas through and through that one line you, you picked out. You're absolutely right. I'm not going to disc- discount you, but I'm going to discount that that takes any Delta off. If I could give this thing six deltas, I'd give it six deltas. Cause it's star Trek through and through it wow. answers every single one of those things. Yes. We should have watched it sooner. Do I want to watch it again? Not anytime soon. Cause I don't like this journey. I don't want to go down this one. I'm ready to move on to the next episode. I don't know about you, Jeff. <laughs> put I this am. One to bed. And that's it. We can't put this one to bed. We just did it. That is. Believe it, believe it. So next week we're going to be watching survivors. Now we talked about this at the beginning, but Brent, we don't know anything about this other than that one word. What do you think <laughs> survivors is? Oh, you got it. Okay. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. So it's actually like a part two to this episode. All right. Okay. On in, in the world of the great egg, wherever they are, there is a group of people who have been cut open. Maybe they fell off their bike when they were kids. I don't know. And they are still alive, but their spirit has escaped them and they are the survivors and they're going to come out of the woodwork and whatever. That's wow. what I think it is. Maybe, maybe they end up with that. Ultimately that revolution that would have happened if Franklin, if they didn't ritually kill their kid and look, he's fine. Right. Everything's fine. Right. Oh, Cause that's wow. all going to get back to the home world, you know? And I love that too, because then like the Jakars and the Londos who were just like, yeah, you are nothing. Mm -hmm. And then this massive religious rebellion is going to break out and it's going to be right in their front yard at some point. But but, but see, here's the thing, because this is a low budget show and they don't have the budget, they're not going to be able to make the world that they're going to have to go live on. So all those survivors, what's going to happen is they're going to have heard that Babylon five is a place where they can live and actually be accepted. Even though that one guy got killed, but that was because of his parents. The rest of the people are ready to accept them. So they're going to come now, try to live on the station. Or maybe they're already there. Right. And then they catch wind of like, these people were here and they did this. Oh, this is so wrong. And this is going to, I I like that. They're the survivors. That's, that's my guess. That's good. What about you, Jeff? So I think, I think we're going to take a dark turn, (laughs) a dark again. How do we take a dark turn after this episode? (laughs) How do we We turn a kid, Jeff? We killed a kid. I think uh, I think we're gonna we're gonna go back to Home Guard, and I think Home Guard is gonna up the stakes. I'm thinking uh, bombing in the council chambers or something like that, and then it's gonna turn into not not anyone in there. Like no one will have been there. Maybe somebody that doesn't matter. But then it's gonna turn into one of those kind of procedural shows where they talk to the people that work on the station that were around it who survived the survivors, and that's gonna uh-huh. like piece together what actually happened. Ooh, and then, so it's a courtroom show. Yeah, yeah. I, I love sci-fi courtroom shows. Yeah. I, I I hate like stuff like uh, 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 all the courtroom dramas you see see during primetime. I'm not a big fan of those. But when sci-fi does an episode that's a courtroom episode, oh, I love those episodes. Yeah, oh, and it's gonna oh, be yeah, there's gonna be good. there's gonna be somebody in there who's you know clearly clearly innocent, but a little weird. But as they start piecing the stories together, why does this guy's name keep coming up? What's mm-hmm. this? And then oh, I'm the I'm the racist over here. Hi, and so that's my guess. All right. All right. Well, Jeff, I like it. I guess we're going to find out next week if we're right or if we're wrong. But for now, that is going to put a button on the episode. Believe it, believe it. 
literally all week brent's been texting he's like i don't care if this screws up monetization or whatever we're playing this song <laughs> <laughs> I want you to go back and everywhere where we have said the word believer before now, reinsert that. Like, just cut it out and put that in. I don't care how annoying it gets for the hour or whatever that this episode goes. Hey, folks out there, don't forget to subscribe to Babylon 5 for the first time wherever you get your podcast. Is that Apple Podcast, Podcast Addict, Stitcher, Overcast, Podchaser, Audible? Uh, Google Play Music, Spotify, um, uh, iHeartRadio, any of those, you guys can find us. Make sure you subscribe or go check us out on YouTube. Catch all the behind-the-scenes action of what's happening with Jeff and I. You'll find out all the places where we screwed up. You'll get the the things that Jeff decides to cut out and says, no, that's Brent really just went off the wall talking about something, so I'm going to cut all that out. Uh, or you're going to, you're going to get all the, we have like a pre-show little banter that we do before, sometimes a little post-show, depending on what we got going on. Uh, so you guys go over, subscribe to us on YouTube. Like there's a huge community that's developing on YouTube, especially, and you guys want to jump in and be a part of that. It is definitely fan freaking tastic. And please, wherever you go, if they allow you to leave a rating and review, I know Apple does that. I know audible does that. And I know pod chaser. Those are the three I know that allow you to do ratings and reviews. If there's another one, please do it there too. go give us a rating and review. It lets other people know that we're awesome and that they should listen to us just like you. And they can also join this fan fan community that is coming up around this amazing Babylon five show that Jeff and I are just discovering for the first time. And until next time, Brent, I'm just going to wander to and fro, maybe fro and to, but the whole time, I'm going to make sure that I live long and prosper. Stop! <sighs> Come on, yeah. man. Not a Star Trek podcast. Someday I'll get it. Well, there it is. There it is. Okay, it you got to explain that outro to me. <laughs> So I, I might outro, be missing it. What what is this? You'll wander to and fro and fro and to what? That was what uh, that was that? Ivanova when she was like uh, throwing throwing slack, throwing shade at Sinclair, and uh, she's like, "Oh yeah, I've got plenty to do here. You know, I can just kind of wander to and fro, and then I can maybe I can walk over to my console, and then I can just I don't know, go fro and to." Jeff, I know you and I have had a lot of offline conversations about how to do the ending of the show. Uh -huh. I think we're so far into it, we almost have to keep the bit going. But if we can always pull in a something, some obscure reference from the episode we've just watched, maybe you've been doing that and I've never noticed. I have been actually. Have you? Yeah. yeah. Keep that, like that's <laughs> that's the money right there. I love I love that YouTube guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming through. Uh, I saw one of my favorite um, comments uh, from a couple episodes ago. Jeff was okay. I'm going to describe this whole show. Brent's going to come on and tell you why he doesn't like the show. And then Jeff's going to talk about it for a while. And Brent's going to start to like the show. Yep. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that that's how it worked today, but, um, you guys are awesome. Thank you guys so much. And please remember no spoilers, like subscribe, all that sort of stuff. We'll see you guys next time for survivor. Believer. Survivor. Survivor.